Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with your hosts, Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, Amy Luby, and Carl Palachuk. Produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts technology community. We're dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. All right, welcome back to the SNB Community Podcast. This is James Kernan with Kernan Consulting here with my bestest of best friends, Amy Babinchek. Hey, Amy. Wow, I've been elevated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's been you and me, it seems like, uh, on these podcasts. So uh, uh, you have been elevated. But uh, cool, well, cool. I don't you. know if that's a good thing or not, but uh, oh, I'll, I will I'll, say it is. I'll be pleased to find out. So. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. Cool. So how what what's going on? What what's new with you? Well, I thought I would tell you. Carl's not here. I get to speak for him today. So um Carl and I are going to Australia to speak at the SMBIT Pro Conference down there. Mm -hmm. Great national organization. And um we both have been there before and we've been invited again. We're each doing our individual sessions, but we're doing a session together too. And the one we're doing together is, um, I'm sort of thinking of it as a different take on the M&A conversation, because the M&A conversation is like, oh, you've worked all these years and now you're ready to retire, so it's time to sell your business. Um, we're really going to talk about the fact that retirement often looks different for business owners, right? You, selling your business doesn't have to be the only way that you can retire. It, maybe mm -hmm. one way and what are all the different things you need to consider and what are your options for for planning your retirement in this next phase of life you right. know it's a little different than if you just have a job and then you cycle out of it and it's this kind of this clear-cut end but business owners often don't have that so that's what we're going to be talking about very cool um, and then i'm also going to be doing a technical session there um by um, not with Carl on my own and Carl's doing in a session as well on his own. I'm not sure what his other topic is, but mine is a technical deep dive into uh, Microsoft 365 as your endpoint detection and response um, system because it is built into business premium. Most folks don't really understand how to get that set up. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do a technical deep dive on how to do that and um, the thing that was really interesting to me is they said they put out their call for speakers for that conference. They had 22 responses, which is awesome. Um, but none, no one, not a single person came forth with a technical session for an IT conference. Wow. That's different, right? It, this is a, this is a full pendulum swing from mm -hmm. years ago when you would go and a conference would be all technical sessions with a couple of business sessions off in the corner. And right. now the pendulum has swung completely the other way where they're all business sessions and you can hardly convince them to squeeze in a technical session here and there. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's true. That's true. It, uh, I always like the balance, you know, I always like kind of the mixture. Uh, so it attracts both crowds, but, yeah. um, I do love those business conversations. I know you do. You've got something new going on. Yeah, I've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, so there's a couple things I wanted to bring up. One is the um, something I thought is fun. I always one of my favorite sessions. So I always speak at our quarterly mastermind events, and one of the sessions that I have that is really fun is I call it Anything Goes. So it's dedicated time, and members and guests and and sponsors can ask any question that they want. And sometimes it's just me, but the reality is it's a discussion of all of us that are in the room. So you've got almost this highly intelligent advisory board, especially when you're there or Carl's there, but uh, we're, we'll talk about anything that anybody brings up. So I wanted to bring that to social media and I just started that. I mean, it's kind of fun, but uh, I'm doing it both on LinkedIn. So just look for me on LinkedIn or look for me on Facebook, James Kernan. And you can follow me and then you'll see weekly posts where you can ask anything and then I'll do a video response on on those questions. So uh, that, that's that been a lot of fun. I'm just trying to do more fun things out on, on social media to help the community. 
Uh, that so that, that sounds pretty cool. It's kind of like a an ask me anything type session, but I, I like that you're turning it into LinkedIn video. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another thing for all you uh, Traction fans or EOS fans out there, anybody that's ever read that book uh, called Traction, Gina Wickman, uh, or Get a Grip, you know, it's another version of it, or my favorite one was What the Heck is EOS? Uh, something, I, I've been through the training, the EOS training, and as a business coach, a lot of us take our customers through the same journey, you know, business plan, goals, marketing plan, what campaigns are you running, who are your strategic partners, you know, what makes you different or unique uh, or better than your competitors in your local marketplace. These are all exercises. And one thing that was kind of fun that I've done in my practice was uh, <clears throat> I've broken down that uh, that journey, the EOS journey in, in 12 exercises. And I've uh, been working with MSP business owners that are struggling with their growth or controlling their growth or even, you know, other issues in the business. Most of the time it's communication, but uh, broken it down into 12 one hour leadership meetings. And I run all these on Zoom. So video meetings with uh, you and your leadership team. And then each week we go through one of these 12 exercises. And at the very end, you complete your full, you know, two page business plan, which uh, the book Traction calls it your VTO, your vision traction organizer. But I'm getting a lot of traction with that. And I, I love it because it's a meaningful exercise and it makes a huge difference in people's businesses when they implement this structure, this blueprint, and uh, you know, have weekly meetings, they have dashboards, they're tracking the actual performance against their goals. Uh, it creates that uh, culture of success, I call it. But uh, I've been doing a lot of that lately. And we've got four going on right now. And it's uh, it's a lot of fun uh, seeing what a difference that makes in, in people's businesses. Well, it's a certain amount of accountability too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, a uh, business owner, when you're at the, the pinnacle, there's nobody there really to hold you accountable. Right. So you have to get these devices to hold you accountable, right? <laughs> yeah. And it always seems it needs to be a third person. And, uh, you know, I, I'm the same way. I like, I, I like having an accountability partner in different things that I do to, you know, if I say it out loud that I'm going to do something, then I'll be there and I'll, I'll do it. I'll show up and get it done. Uh, but if you're doing it all by yourself, it's really easy to hit the snooze alarm and, and skip that workout or not follow through on something because, you know, like I used to say, it's always lonely at the top. You know, I like having someone else, but that's exactly it. The, the other cool thing is <clears throat> employees will help you get to your goals faster than you just trying to do it yourself. What I see in the MSP community, a lot of, a lot of smart people, they've got all their goals and, and expectations up in their head, but they never put it in writing and they fail to connect the employees to the vision of the business, where the business is going. And these exercises, the finale, which is my favorite exercise, is a presentation of the full business plan back to the entire team. So it, it connects each employee to the overall, you know, 10-year plan of where the business is going. So uh, that's that's always really fun. I'm always surprised at how many business owners will try to keep that stuff from employees. Yeah. Like they just, they want, they get almost overly obsessed with the billable hour and their productive time. And well, if I do that, then I'm just taking away from you know, from their time where they could be making me money. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's really short, short term vision, though. Mm -hmm. Right. If they know where you're going, they can help you get there. It, exactly. And they need to, it, it gives them a purpose at work. It, it's something that will motivate them to jump out of bed on Monday morning or stay late on a Friday night to, because they're connected to the goals and the vision of the business. It's, it's their purpose. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I always, you know, you can wrap in incentives and and other things, but it's really pride, you know, when they feel connected and appreciated to where the business is going, they're going to try a hell of a lot harder. So, um, you know, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Earlier, you said something that 
that uh, caught my ear. You said the problems are always communication. That's mm -hmm. a, that's mm -hmm. something that's something that I always say too. I uh, you know even even when it's uh, you know there's an unhappy customer, let's say there, you know, and you want to think that oh well, you know, this is a that's a technical issue, mm -hmm. but hands down every single time it's about communication right right something wasn't communicated to the client you know or it took a little extra long it took a few more hours it was going to be a little more expensive whatever it was um it just wasn't communicated to the client properly and if you can communicate then all these problems just go away like mm -hmm. clients are very understanding employees understand you know as long as they feel like they're part of the process and mm -hmm. they, you know, they understand what happened. You, you did that communication, then everything just smooths out. It's right. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you can do that through, you know, just weekly management meetings or weekly staff meetings where you're going through the dashboard, the goals, you know, what's happening with our customers, what, what are the top three things this week? What are the top three things next week that we can prep and talk about? And it seems like as you go through that, you start meeting as a team more and more. Uh, the, the the business owners that I talk to that meet with their team on a weekly basis, you know, same time, same day each week consistently, mm -hmm. are are um, per, outperforming by far the ones that don't. And I'm sure you hear this too, Amy, in your circles of how busy we all are as business owners. I don't have time to meet. And, and most uh, MSP business owners are introverts, right? And they don't like that socialization or, or meeting where they don't have time to create an agenda. Uh, to me, that's just part of leadership. And it's so critically important, uh, not just for you, the business owner, to be in tune with what's going on, but for the rest of your leadership team that's, you know, should be or really running the business. So anyway, yeah, it is communication. Yeah, it, that's it's interesting. My um, my MSP does meet weekly. They meet on Tuesday mornings, and um, you know they sort of uh, part of it is chit chat, you mm -hmm. know, because it's that's part of team building as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't all get in one place to be able to talk to each other because they all work from home. So so part of it's chit chat, but part of it also is um, a you know. I call it like a true up of where you were last week, where you're at this week, what's going on. And they sort of go around the room and everybody talks about that. And that yeah. invariably starts a conversation about something, you know, somebody right. needs help with something. We need some, we need to do some training on this, I, you know, and they, they, they feel comfortable saying, I don't know what I need to do with this, or, you know, is there anybody who can help me with that? And, that's where a lot of these that type of thing comes out. As long as you mm. encourage that sort of open conversation, um, they get they get more and more comfortable at, at doing it. Yeah, but you're right. Having it be every Tuesday, they know that you know as they're going through their week, they've got things in their head that they're going to talk about on Tuesday. Exactly. Yeah, that's you know I always call that that's my time where I know that I'm meeting with the rest of the team. That consistency is really important. And the other thing for you business owners that, um, you know, thinking about those meetings or maybe you're holding those meetings, make sure you, they meet regardless if you're there or not. It's a great leadership opportunity for other people in your leadership team to run the meeting when you're not there. You know, if you're traveling or on vacation, they should still meet anyway. So uh, I think it's great practice. So uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. And in fact, in the case of my MSP, they do, you know, if they, uh, the manager of, of my MSP, he's generally the ones that does those meetings. I, I come in occasionally um, and I'm there when he's gone, but if both of us are unavailable for some reason, the team just meets anyway, right? Mm -hmm. they, they've been doing these long enough that they're not going to not have the meeting. They just, they yeah. just, somebody, need, somebody, you know, somebody jumps in and starts it up on teams, you know, like that old, old saying the same bat channel, same bat time, right? <laughs> and consistency is so important. Let me tell you about the smart person that I interviewed recently. Yeah. Um, 
Her name is Ashlyn Silva. And she tells me I should say that with a Bronx accent, but I don't know how to do that. So, <laughs> um, but um, I ran into her at a conference. Um, she was she was uh, promoting some new research that she had done. Um, she's with the JS group. And um, she is a really interesting person. She caught my eye because she's probably 30-ish. She's a PhD in history, and yet she's found herself in IT, and she calls herself a data nerd. And I don't think of history PhDs as being data nerds, but that's where she learned it. And then, um, but she found that um, the IT industry from a data side is really very interesting, especially when you look at it from, uh, from the macro point of view, because we don't have those statistics. We're all buried kind of down in our own little world. And we think that our world represents the whole world. Um, and so she's taking a, a bigger view on this and getting the statistics together. And so I talked to her a little bit about how she made the move from history to IT. Today I am talking to smart person, Ashlyn Silva. He's my best New York accent. It's pretty lousy, I know. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're welcome. She is a very smart person. She is a data nerd, self-described. So tell me about your path to becoming a data nerd and how you ended up in the technology industry. So fun story, I was a history nerd first and I got my doctorate in that, which taught me a lot of really fun and interesting research skills that I was able to apply in other fields. And I found the perfect field that needed data scientists and that was the tech channel. So I have been able to translate my research skills from historical accuracy to things that are happening in the channel, trends, TSDs, I could say a lot of MSPs, SMBs, we could go and do all the letters, but- we have all the acronyms <laughs> Yes, in we have industry. all the acronyms, but uh, it's an industry that has room and space for researchers and need for research and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Well, researchers are new to our industry. Yes. Like, suddenly I bump into a couple, but we're so desperate for, we don't know anything about ourselves. Yes, because <laughs> you're changing constantly, right? So it's hard to get to know yourself when you're evolving so much. Right. So I saw a presentation where you are unfortunately not on the stage. No. You should have been. I was in the front row. You should have been on the stage. Oh, thank, you. thank you. But it had these awesome slides about a report that you just did. So... What did you find when you were doing your research that's relevant to MSPs? What can you I tell actually us? want to tell you we're just what we were just talking about. It's changing so much and not enough people are listening and not enough people are paying attention to the information that's out there that could help us reform and become better and stronger and make more money. Um, and that was a lot of the focal point of this research was to kind of open some eyes, open some ears, and bring some attention to the fact that research can really make a difference in this industry and can help us in the long run. So I'm hoping that that's what came across. <laughs> Making money is what we're all here for yes, in of the course. end. Of course. Right? Um, what specific things are we not paying attention to that we need to open our eyes on? I would say there is a new buyer type in the younger generations that are coming into this space with especially with SMBs and medium-sized businesses. I mean it's not a cliche it's like not. young people will just clickety click on something. Yeah it, just... it is not it's not I, I hate to say it my research shows that since COVID there's been a subscriber based performance where you people want to pay for things in a subscription based form they want it they don't want to talk to anyone they just want to get it they want to get it consistently and they don't want to have to worry about it anymore so we have to figure out a way to kind of bring that thought process and that quickness and efficiency into the channel and also look at what that does for us in the long run because we can't just implement something without thinking about the data in the future yeah so so that's not just a consumer thing it's no. a actual businesses are just going out and yeah I, we used to call that shadow ID Yes. But now it's just normal IT. Yes, yes, yes. See, I'm thinking of things like like um, the food subscriptions, like HelloFresh and stuff like that. There's such yeah. a demand for that, and I'm seeing it trickle here. So it's coming. It's coming. Well, we must be ready. 
it's coming, it's probably already here, yes. and we just don't even know it yes, yet. Yes, right? exactly. We go right back to where we started. We're not talking about enough. So hopefully if we get the information out there, we start some conversations like you and I are having, and more people are talking about it. All right, cool. Well, you work for JS Group, and if you guys aren't familiar with them, please go and check them out and find her research. Thank you for your time. This podcast is sponsored by the Small Biz Thoughts technology community. Check us out at smallbizthoughts.org. Forums, templates, and checklists are just the start. Our community includes all of the best-selling books on managed services in all available formats, plus free training, members-only programs, and the best business training available to managed service providers anywhere. Plus, we have weekly live members-only Zoom calls the average member saves more than 200% of their membership cost each year. We are totally dedicated to your success. Just because you're in business for yourself doesn't mean you have to go it alone. Join us today at smallbizthoughts.org. So, hey, what was the MSP question of the week? There's a, there's a group on Facebook that I'll give them a little plug. It's called This is an IT Support Group. And it is populated mostly by um, internal corporate IT people, but there's a bunch of MSPs in there as well. And um, it's a little rough around the edges. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it gets a, little, gets a little male locker roomish in there sometimes, I think. But <laughs> <clears throat> I kind of wish that whoever is the admin for it, and I don't know who it is because they don't seem to moderate, I wish they would take away anonymous posting. I think yeah. that's the worst thing that Facebook did for groups was was allow anonymous posting. But um, if you're in any of the groups that I that I run off of my third tier page, I I turned the anonymous posting feature off. Like mm-hmm. this is this is not Reddit. This is people to people, real people here. But uh, the conversation in there um, was about certifications. And a guy asked, you know, he's been thinking, um, what certifications should he focus on completing if he's looking to move up, you know, get a better job? And uh, and so there was a bunch of certification haters that, you know, jumped in and like, oh, it's worthless, experience Trump's certification every time. You know, I never had any certifications, so you don't need any certifications. Um, and I, I don't think that that's true at all. Um, you know, my my thought is um, that certifications are back, right? When I started in, started in IT, you couldn't get a job without some kind of a certification. And I think we're coming back to that. It's moving in that direction. I think it will continue to move in that direction. Expertise is needed and certification is the way that you prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I think the certs are so important, you know, in uh, there's always two arguments to to this, but being, you know, a business owner in the MSP channel and then being a sales professional MSP channel, I think a huge differentiator is certifications. And, uh, you know, one, when you're selling to prospects and to current customers, I think certifications are incredibly important. And number two, just as important when you're trying to develop, further develop that strategic partnership with Microsoft or with Cisco or with VMware, and you don't have people certified, they won't give you the time of day. And uh, again, as a business owner, if I'm running my business to make more money and to develop those partnerships and make more rebates or get deeper margins, hint, hint, you need those certifications to move from bronze to silver or silver to gold uh, with some of those partnerships. I know Microsoft's changing their their programs around or names, but uh, I think you get get my drift. I, I think they're incredibly important. I 100% agree. And so... Um... I think it was bad advice that, you know, this person was being given on, you know, that experience will trump certification every time. 
I don't know, as a person who hires people, I can tell you if I see a certification on their resume, they're immediately to the top of the pile because I already know something about them. I instantly know that they have a baseline of knowledge and now I can talk to them about their experience on that thing. Whereas if I'm, if there isn't one, now I have to try to ferret out what their baseline is, where they're at, what they might know, what they, where their gaps are. Um, certification just levels you up right from the yeah. get go. Yeah. And so many times when I talk to the engineers uh, about certifications and the ones that don't like them or think they're worthless are the ones that call themselves bad test takers. Well, I know, I know all that stuff. I know all that stuff. I'm just a bad, bad uh, test taker. And, you know, I, I know 10 guys that are certified and I could run circles around them. So, uh, you know, I, I won't even go there because I'm sure you've heard that as well. But uh, for the good test takers and the bad test takers, uh, trust me, I've been in the channel for 30 years. I think they're really, really important. And I think they're even getting more and more important, uh, it, you know, as we move forward, you know, with a lot of these uh, partner program changes. Yeah. Test taking is a skill. It can be learned. If you're a bad test yeah. taker, that just means that you haven't yet learned how to take these exams. And, you know, that's something that that you should be able to to reach out to your employer and tell them that, you know, you've not had good success at taking these, these tests and you need, you need to know how to take the test, right? Yeah. It's exactly. not that you don't have the knowledge. You just, you're not, you're not understanding how to, how to complete the, the test in the way that they expect you to do it. That's a skill in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. That's a, a interesting post and, and feedback. But uh, all right, well, that's enough for today. Amy, thanks for uh, joining me today on the SMB Community Podcast. We'll tune out and catch everybody next time. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback. Thank you.